I start by removing the two caliper bolts. I then remove the caliper, old brake pads, and the old hardware. Now I secure the caliper out of the way. These two bolts on the rear will need to be removed. The top one is a little tight, so I use a ratcheting wrench for it. The caliper bracket is now free and I can now remove the rotor. I'll be replacing both of these boots the old ones have turned hard. The new boots will also get new grease and the old hardware will be replaced. The old boots come off by gently pulling them off. I cleaned both of the guide pins, what a difference! And I also cleaned these two areas where the guide bolts travel. For the new boots, I'll place some of this grease along the caliper pin. A little bit inside of here, and a little inside the boot. To reinstall the boot, I gently push it back onto the pin, then the pin back into the caliper. Here are the two new boots installed. The pins can move freely again, very smooth. I like to avoid putting too much grease to leave space for the pins to move. Before reinstalling the rotor, I like to clean this area with the wire brush. I'll then clean it with the brake cleaner. Nice! Look at how nice this area cleaned up. Now, to protect the metal, I like to apply a super thin layer of the caliper grease. I can finally reinstall the new rotor. The caliper bracket is next. I start both bolts by hand before using any power tools. For the top one, I again use the ratcheting wrench to tighten it. Then I'll torque them to factory specs. Before I install the hardware, I'll grease these two areas. Then I'll be able to snap this little guy back into its spot until it's nice and secure. I'll do the same for the top one. With the grease applied, they can finally be installed. Moving to the brake pads, the pad that goes in the back is the one with the wear indicator. I also like to apply a little bit of grease on the back of the pad, especially in the area where the brake piston contacts the pad. 
Also, a little grease on the spring and the edges of the metal backing. Same with the front pad. I apply a thin layer of grease on the edges of the metal backing and back of the pad. This just snaps right in. I then open the brake fluid reservoir. As I compress a caliper, the fluid will rise and I may need to remove some. To compress the piston in the caliper, I use a special tool. I've done this with a vise in the past, but it's a lot easier with this tool. I simply place it inside the caliper, line it up with the piston, and then I turn the handle. This pushes the piston back into the caliper. I go really slow here to allow the brake fluid to flow back into the reservoir. Once the piston has been compressed, I can back out and remove the caliper compressor. With the extra space, the caliper will now fit gently over the pads. Now I just reinstall the two bolts that hold the caliper in place. As always, I install them by hand before using any power tools. When aligned correctly, this flat portion right here keeps the sleeve from turning while the bolts are tightened. Next, I torque them to factory spec. Lastly, I check the fluid level on the reservoir and top off as needed. All right, well, now that the new brakes are installed, I'm gonna punt the brake pedal a couple times to fully seat the pads. And we're gonna take this bad boy out for a test drive. So, as usual, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like the video, because we're gonna have more SRT videos coming up. And thanks for watching.